Yep, got a tap. Come on. And they're straight they're right in front of the boat. They're going right under the boat. Yeah, they're right here. And they're all over the place. Look at it. See the swirls? Look at it. They're all over the place. Cast, cast anywhere there. You should cast. No, this one might be bigger. Head first. Whoa, that's a big one. Well, welcome back. This is Jeff at Battlefish again, and uh, another Redfish video on live scope. And uh, again, if you subscribe, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I've got over 260 videos fishing the St. John's River between downtown all the way south of the Shands Bridge. Uh, about three, four years worth of fishing videos. So if you are looking to learn how to fish the St. John's River, take a look. Uh, it's a great uh, resource uh, the St. John's River and it is teeming with fish you just got to know how to fish them and how to find them so again thanks for joining this is the full video of the two minute preview I posted last week and uh, I hope you enjoy Live scope is a fantastic tool and it sees fish under the water, but that does not mean you still don't use your eyes. So we're using our eyes again here, looking at fish on top of the water. Uh, headwakes of big bull redfish in the St. John's. And this is, uh, man, it's a heart, uh, heart racing scene and uh, very exciting to see. And if you can get a bait in there, just about any bait that for that matter, you're bound to hook up. See him? Might be a slot, well, maybe not. He's pretty big. And if you watch my videos uh, going back a couple years, uh, I'm using my favorite bait here, the Crazy Croaker. I really only use two baits for these redfish: Crazy Croaker or the Submission Fishing Jig. Uh, Sonia is using the Tsunami Pro Mullet uh, Paddle Tail, like the that. silver one. Like that. that seems to be good for uh, redfish, trout, flounder and tarpon and uh, one of the reasons I use those two baits particularly the Tsunami Pro Mullet and the Crazy Crooker is because they are good for okay. tarpon and Three redfish. Right. 
there. So this area of the St. John's is, is a, oh my God, look at that. an area where there is a deep section, 12, 14, 15 feet, that goes into a very shallow area. So my boat is sitting in about five feet of water, but those fish you're seeing head wake, where the head wakes are is less than two feet of water. It was an outgoing tide, and uh, it actually gets to about a foot deep there at a low tide. Uh, it's really shallow. There's a little There's peninsula one. that comes out there. Oh, yeah. um, if you go on the other side of that, though, near the docks, real up, it's real back up. down to three, four feet deep. Uh, so they were they were going over that uh, oh, shallow oh, area, oh. and that's why you see the head wakes. You know, probably 80 to 100 fish, I, I'm guessing. So one of the challenges with live scope, and I've talked about this before, is uh, direction, obviously, where you're pointing the live scope and where yeah, the fish right are in relation to your boat and where you're going to cast, and then how far you can cast. Um, I had originally had it set up at 120 feet, then I switched to 150 feet, and I felt mm -hmm. that was too far. Even though I could spot more fish far away, I just had a trouble gauging how far I could cast, and I was falling short. Uh, of the fish that were on the live scope. So I shortened it back up to 120 feet. Again, it depends on your casting distance. Um, it appears I can cast around 70 to 100 feet depending on the wind. Sonia is somewhere probably 70 to 80 feet. Um, so, it, you know, it, you gotta gauge that uh, according to uh, how you can cast. But aiming this live really scope and around. aiming your boat or as your boat's moving, you're changing the live scope position, it, it's really tricky. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. And um, a lot of times you're casting to empty one. water. <sighs> yeah, and if you've uh, listened to me before and I talked to the South Strong guys about this as well, um, the one thing, I've discovered a lot of things with LiveScope, but the one thing I have discovered is 98% of the water you're fishing in does not have catchable fish. And I cannot emphasize that enough, guys. It's not your bait. It's not how you're twitching the bait. It's none of that. You're just casting in empty water. And yeah, fishing in empty water. That's Just it. To the right. Um, it is astonishing to me how far I can travel with that live scope and not see a single living thing. This could be the big one. You got up? So uh, when you get the submission up. fishing jigs, you're going to have a hook on each end of the jig. I put both oh. hooks on one end of the jig, Man, and this one. Off. This had to be oh, this had to yeah. be a much bigger redfish than the 40 or 42 inches I've been catching, um, and I just put too much pressure on them. That uh, Daiwa reel, um, I've got it set probably at about Rook 25 pounds of drag. I Rook think the maximum is 29 pounds of drag, and. Um, I mean, I've got it set tight, so uh, unfortunately it was probably too tight and I broke the hooks. And then Sonia's fish, you're going to see her catch, the hook broke on that Tsunami Pro mullet as well. Uh, I broke the hook. Broke both hooks. I know. And then uh, another thing, uh, especially about these redfish, and the tarpon for that matter as well, uh, this time of year, uh, they're all over the river. Uh, there is no specific spot. I do keep going back to a spot. Yes, I do, because I know there's, I, there's been fish there. But we discovered them in Mandarin. Uh, we've discovered them over at Moose Haven. We've discovered them south of, Moose, Moose, south of Doctors Lake Inlet on the west side of the river. I have discovered them in Ortega. Avondale, San Marco, 
you name it. Uh, so just because you're catching in one pot spot doesn't mean that's where all the fish are. They're all over the river. Um, if you go back uh, a couple weeks, you saw I caught uh, 11 uh, overslot redfish uh, down by the Shands Bridge uh, across from Green Cove Springs. So uh, they're all over the river. Um, so, you know, spend some time in some spots and, and, and see uh, what you can find. Uh, got him around the gill. It does appear that a very deep area uh, that you, comes you got up him snagged in the gill, I think. pretty dramatically to a shallow area. Uh, like it's 14, 15 feet deep and then very quickly rises to four to three to feet to two feet and then goes into the shore. Uh, that seems to be uh, kind of key areas, but you know, it's, it's hard to find a pattern. And thanks again for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I post videos at least once a week, and I'm about three or four videos behind right now. So uh, please support my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you.